Welcome to working with projection and particularly Mad Mapper as the final tool used to put this together. Now I've used a range of software and you can use whatever you want. I'm going to take you through my process but just to begin with I'm going to start off with just that little one there down the bottom there it's just called a uh, tap measure. So I'm just going to uh, see if I can just click on that and it just opens up there and in this case it's uh, just my workroom here but you can tap to grab a surface and then you go on the tape measure or the tap measure here you turn into 3D and you can send it to, uh, to the cloud on the last one there and then I've used that just to do a mock-up so I'm just going to take you through this process and so I hope you enjoy the tutorial so thanks a lot for watching okay now here we are with the software or some of the uh, tools I work with but just starting off with the tap measure this is what it looks like and you can download this and it's free so it's quite a cool little tool it's probably going to get better but it really did help me with just setting up my initial scene now what I got from this was this little file here which I extruded just to sort of 3D and you can save it to SketchUp and then basically just download it from SketchUp like so and uh, it will work in SketchUp if you're using SketchUp as for me I actually and working with a software called Strata which I really like um, but to do work with that I first just took it into Adobe Illustrator just the line and just copy that really quickly and just extruded it out so it looked like this here's the scene here of course I've added boxes in there as well did that in 3d software and just have a look at how that 3d software what it looks like I'm just going to click on this um, I've got the later version as well on my larger machine but um, here it is we'll just um, I'll just run it around so just a 3d scene and then at any stage you can set up any sort of outputs very easy to use and it's quite affordable software but anyway I just wanted to render that up like so just close that um, like so and just go back here and just have a look at these scenes again so this is what it looked like so this really sort of helped me to work out my projection and initially I used that as the angle I wanted to work with which I'm just going to show you in just a second now the other thing I've done, of course, um, I've just used Logic to just create some sound work, um, but if you can get copyright free sound, whatever you're going to do, that's good, but just think about um, it being copyright, which is important. And of course, let's see what else was there. And then obviously I used um, Motion. So I created a few movies for this. It was a sort of a presentation, an opening for something, but um, essentially uh, Motion I really like. I started using Final Cut and Motion back in the older days when it was Final Cut Studio and I just sort of stayed with um, the new 10 version and of course I really like uh, Motion, it's just my preferred software whether you use After Effects or whatever it doesn't matter so I'll just close that and you can see some of the files here so um, let's see now what I've also have done is um, I did a test and this was basically from the Motion, I'm just going to open that up and I'll just uh, turn the sound down on a little bit and just run it through a little bit based on that first movie I just used the whole surface just to get a bit of a feeling for it now I could have actually gone and just um, segmented or quoted, quoted each box but I just wanted to get a feel on how that was going to work I was originally going to do a full scene map to that surface nicely anyway uh, that's um, an example of just doing the previs so it really comes in handy just to work out your space and and get um, the OK before you spend any time putting it together. And then the final stage was actually taking into the room, seeing the room, painting the art boxes, the plinths, whatever you want to call them. And it basically came out in a Mad Mapper format. Now what I've got here is everything is quadded or, or has quads on it. See how I'm turning things off? These are all separate quads and I've just got a segment of the movie all put in there. Now I'm going to show you how to do this in, in just a, a minute, but I just wanted to, or a second really, but I just wanted to show you this tool has all sorts of um, uses of bringing in live video, playing with different effects, which I've done there, even the sound effect, because um, I wanted this to go partially onto the floor, as you saw in that original video. Um, let's see, live, you can have quartz compose, all sorts of things, grids, whatever, you, there's a lot to play with. Now all I'm going to do is actually just show you how to initially set that up so you can just run it through and bring in your sources to get you quickly started. And then it's just a matter of playing. Very, very easy software to work with. Now what I've got here is also, just across here, I'm not using any of the um, uh, effects uh, to do with um, LEDs or whatever. I'm just staying, or DMX box or whatever, I just want to stay 
just with the quads and the projection. Um, the projector you'd set up here, I haven't got it hooked on at the moment, but it's, it was a 1920 by 1080 output. And uh, then you've got a whole lot of settings you can play with by playing with your different values and colors right down through to setting up and masking. But these are the things you just need to play with, okay? But uh, the other key thing here is just with the presets. So I can just jump between different presets. Okay, I'll just turn the sound off there. So you can have as many as you want, and each preset you can have a total, totally different configuration of these quads. So you can imagine you're doing whole shows or whatever. It's uh, just a fantastic tool. And of course, up to version three now, I'm on 2.5 here, so it's only getting better, which I'll have to get soon, I think. Anyway, I'm just going to show you with this next part of the video on just how to quickly set things up uh, in order to work like it did in that initial preview at the start. Okay, so now we've had a little bit of a demo of all these different files. Let's go through and build something, and I just want to show you how easy it is to build. Now you just need to go to Mad Mapper to open a file. I've already just uh, created one, it's totally empty, but I'll just open this up anyway because I want to take you from square one in order to put this together. Now just remember this is not the latest software, it's into the third version now. Well done, it'll have a uh, 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3 as it goes through, but um, I'm not sure what it's up to, but uh, nonetheless it's getting better and better. Starting off with version one, wow, this software has really gone leaps and bounds. So how do we do this? now? We've got all our quads to set up. We've got lines and different shapes. We even got 3D and folders to put things in. Now, full 3D with UV mapping. I'm not going to show you that just now, but um, yes, it's uh, fairly fantastic. You can have full actual 3D in there as well. Very simple to put in, especially with OBJ files. Okay, but uh, that's as I say another tutorial. Let's go through and bring this in now. We've got all of our effects, I'm just going to use some of them, but um, using one gives you an idea of how everything works. Please experiment because they go to town, and especially with the animation speeds that all the tools you get in there. One other thing you might like to have a look at later is um, control list. I've got a video I've put together a little bit showing how that works, but um, you put everything together and it's, a, it's a, it can be an amazing show that you can um, end up setting up. But let's start nice and easy, and I'm going to bring in a quad. Now, just before I do that, uh, where am I going to put my quads? What I've got here is I've got uh, Import View, Output View, or both. And you can actually just zoom in to fit everything, so you make sure you fit that in. So this is where you bring the stuff in, and this is where you experiment with it in terms of um, mapping it to the right space. But we don't know what that is. You could have a projector already set up and it's plugged in, which we don't have at this stage, no projector in there. So let's create uh, an image that you've already pre-shot, or in this case, pre-rendered in 3D, and you can help you yourself map it up, just making sure that you know where you want to put the projector, so you base it from that view, photograph or 3D, whatever you're going to put together. So what do you do with that? Well, once you've got your projector set up and you've got it flipped to the, the right facing way, etc., the first thing you need to do is um, we need to bring it in. So let's see, what have we got here? Uh, background okay so let's bring a background in now the background I want because I've already created one is just my wall here so I'm just going to click on that and voila here's my wall now I can actually just go through and um, just make that a little bit bigger but this is just the projector this is not going to be seen it's only showing showcasing what we need to map up so let's go back to our quads now so here's our file here I'll just zoom that down a little bit so there it is so this is our empty um, scene, if you will. Now, if you want to change the count, you can just change the count to anything you want to help you navigate. Standard count at the moment. It might, doesn't really matter what I've got there. This is nice and easy. But uh, nonetheless, you can even set your preview up to see how that looks as well. But I'm just going to leave it like so for the time being, especially on my small laptop screen here. So let's bring in the first quad. First quad here, I need an image. And you can see the output view, and it's just a square one at the moment. And that's how it's coming in, based on the current settings anyway. So, um, let's see, what are we going to do? Well, I'm going to come up here, and I'm just going to go File, and I want to bring in a video. Uh, image or video, whatever, there's all sorts of things you can do here. But as I say, just want to get you up to speed quick. So, Command-I, or Input, Image, Video in this case, I want to use my warp speed, and I'm just going to bring it in. So it should actually uh, load up here, and there it is. 
Now you can see there's a whole lot of extra squares to fill out there. I'm not sure how, exactly how many you can put in there, but um, you can have quads with different videos on each one if you wanted, um, but I'm just using one video, so I'm going to use the same source all the time. So to get the source working as long as this quad is selected, which it is, I'll double click on it, and there it is. Now I'm just going to come down here and I'm just going to pause it just for the time being, so you can see how it's fitting in here. Now. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually just quiet everything up there. So I'm going to take it right to the edge like so, just to divide that up there. I'm doing it pretty roughly. And you see what's happened to my image, but it's uh, right on the left here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start taking this, these points, and shaping it. And so it fits in exactly the right place. Really, really simple. Okay, I'm just going to do just a couple, just to get you going here. So this is the first one. Now, obviously, um, I might just want to go and see it a little bit bigger, and I can just click zoom out, and I'll get more uh, um, specific fitting of it. So is that right? Um, I'll just add it here anyway. Now, it doesn't matter if I'm perfect at this stage, but of course you can spend as much time getting this as, as good as possible. So I think it was actually up here some, somewhere. Okay, so that's the first one. Now, all I'm going to do is add another one. I'll click here. There's the other one, and if I go to my import view i'll just click on both at the same time so you can see them both see there's the first one there so this one therefore needs to come into that that point and as i say i'm mapping up a whole range to, to fit those areas and there it is like so clicking down here i'll just zoom that down and i need to just map that and just snap it in there now it's on snap at the moment which is great but if you don't want it to snap you can turn that on or off uh, and um, sometimes it's great to have it, sometimes it's not. And I'm just going to put that in like that. So that's really all it is, just go through and building up. Now I'm just going to do one large one, because I just want to show you um, how to mask things as well. So I'm just going to click it once again, and I'm just using use the whole image now, but I'm going to click, say, down, and so it goes over part of the image here. So... See, it's in the front at the moment, and um, I'll just take it to the edge here. Okay, so really totally incorrect, but um, now we see that this is in the front of the other one. So all if I want to do, if I want to send it back, I can just drag it down here. And now it's at the back. Now I'll just take it up to the top. Now, is it at the top there? No, it's not. I'll just bring it there. That's better. So you can drag them... Um, one's below, above, or above, one's below, whatever way you want to do it. Now, there's a whole lot of things like pre-multiply or build up to, or just like if you were working with Photoshop, essentially. You can play around with colors to um, take the colors away, um, do, doing all sorts of things, uh, and which is great. You can flip it, uh, if I click down there, do whatever you want, upside down, whatever. Now, there's also down the bottom here, you can do... Um, mesh warping uh, with Bezier tool and things like that, like with Illustrator, so you get handles if I want to turn that on. And I'll just go click onto two here, and suddenly I've got my handles here so I can really start distorting and doing some crazy things. So I might just take this to the large view so we get a bit of a, an idea of how that looks at a bigger size. Now there's one other thing you can do as well here. If I click on that, I can also mask it. So if I want to do any masking, I'll just bring this down here on this one or back to this one for the time being and see down here we've got um, we've also got sphere eyes and all sorts of things I'll leave these up to you to play uh, by the way if you don't like this mesh warping you can uh, go and take it back again and then it's gone so it's great to work with both ways all sorts of precision and things like that there's now masking as well it's a soft edge um, especially when you're blending other uh, projects together you take to dark and uh, uh, might not be totally right the way you see it on the screen but when you um, play with the what's not projecting and put it over other things, you can get lovely blends as well with the multiple projectors. I've got an earlier tutorial on how to do that. But uh, anyway, I've clicked on mask now, so all I need to do is I'm gonna click here, click there, click there, click there, click there, and then hit the return key just to cement it. And voila, if I just click outside of that and click on it, you see that you've actually masked the shape. So anything behind and above or you want to get an accurate shape and mask it, you can do anything you want, apart from distorting it till the cows come home. So 
I'm just going to just play that now just to see how it's going there. Now if you do want the sound, of course the sound, you can turn the sound on at any stage, I won't do that. And here in the position you can move it around to um, beginning or end or play with speeds and all sorts of things. So these are all experimentation things that you might want to do. Now one other thing of course we had a background in that original video at the start. So what I might do is in that case is I'm just going to click um, a, uh, another quad here. But uh, maybe just before I do that I'm just going to choose one of the backgrounds. Now I've used a couple so I've got different quads with different backgrounds but so you can have, have as many as you want. And I think what was the one that I used? I used a sound wave or sound form or something. So I'm just going to double click on that. And you see I've now turned this into a sound wave. If I undo that one and just add another file here. Um, by the way, you can name these to anything. I'll put it sound. I should probably should do that, especially when you get numerous ones. I'm being a bit lazy here. But um, what I'm going to do now is with this quad, I think it was uh, sound wave that I wanted again. Just click on that. There's my sound wave, which you can play with, with the bass scale, with um, treble, speeds, um, and play around with sizes, thicknesses, all sorts of things there to make it a bit more effective, um, and uh, maybe smoother or thickener, time scale, whatever you want to do with it, maybe that's adding effect to it. And then of course, remember it's a quad, so if I click back onto this quad, I'll go back to the inner part of it, it's a little bit big at the moment, um, or a little bit small. Maybe it's it's fine with what whatever you got there, but certainly with this version over here, it's uh, miles too big. So I need to um, make it fit the the area I want. In fact, in actual fact, I want it to project the whole scene outside of that. It might be distorted or whatever. I'm just going to put this over here and just plonk it like so. In fact, I might even rotate it around a bit like that, just to do something a little bit cool. And of course, as I mentioned, I'm just going to drag this right down to the bottom here. So we can see this um, working out. Now, remember the black will not be projected. It'll just be black as nothing. So it'll just be part of the scene right to the edge of whatever the projector can handle, which is this space here. And then um, just to finish off, to give you an idea how that can work, uh, maybe I don't like that color, so... Um, I'm just going to start playing and, and giving it different colors. And that's all I did really with building up multiple scenes with that effect. Now, if you want it to pre multiply over a background, you can play with um, adding it. In fact, there it is, adding it to it now. So, um, if you're going to have different layers behind that. So, now you've got an idea on how this works. I'll just go to the large screen and uh, just bring it up so we get it fitting. And um, We've got our sound wave, we've got all our scenes put together, and it's as simple as doing that. The only thing, of course, you put your projector in and um, make sure the projector's on and it's plugged in before you open Mad Mapper. And when you want to go to your full output screen, it's just a full screen, Command U. When you want to escape it, don't push Escape key, go back to Desktop, it's Command T. Now I'm going to go Command U just for now, and I'll go OK. And now this is the scene that projector's seeing. When you have your projector plugged in, you'll see the other screen where only the projector sees this screen. And remember, it's not escape, but it's Command T just to bring it back, and there you go. So plug your projector in first, making sure it's set up to the right output, which the projector should register, or you can put in the details from it here, any way that you want it, positive, negative, or upside down, or whatever. And essentially, the projector's on, then you open Mad Mapper, making sure it's all plugged in first. Then you go to output and uh, full screen. For the Mac, it's um, just turning off your um, settings. So I'm just going to quickly just show you how to do this, just to finish off with just making sure that you do know how to do that. So just in the settings here, if you go into um, your screen settings, now it's probably not going to show here because I haven't got it plugged in, but um, you just need to... Uh, turn your mirroring off and you're going to get other settings which will enable you to target the different screens. So with multiple projectors you can target all of these ones and drag them left to the right etc. Can't actually show that, I haven't got it plugged in at the moment. I do with earlier videos but essentially it's as simple as that. Okay, so you're good to go. So enjoy working with Mad Mapper and have fun with it and make sure you play with all the other tools as well. Thanks a lot for watching.